Hi, I'm Matt from Build That Website. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to style your links using CSS. First, we're gonna start off with selectors and targeting, and I'll show you how to make sure your CSS rules are applied to the exact links that you mean them to be. Next, we'll move on to some of the most common CSS styles that are applied to hyperlinks. Then we'll talk about the hover pseudo class and how you can use the transition property to easily animate your links. Finally, we'll troubleshoot some of the most common edge cases that pop up, like when your styles are being applied to the wrong element by mistake. Now I should note that I'm doing this tutorial on a WordPress website, but you can use these techniques for any website builder, as long as it allows you to add your own custom CSS code. Now there's a couple of rules I like to follow when styling links on my own site. The first is, I like to use my theme controls just for the basic link styles, and then I can override those styles on a case-by-case -case basis to handle special cases where maybe I want some extra hover effects or something, but I will let my theme handle things like the basic link colors and hover colors, just so I don't have to have a bunch of different CSS rules all over the place. So to show you how to do that on Generate Press, just go to Customize and Colors, and under the body color, you can see that I've set the link color here and the link color hover color. And I could just change the link hover color to something else like this blue. And now if I hover over it, the link hover is blue. Now for this demo, I'm just gonna be styling the links that are in the content area. And I'm gonna leave the sidebar and the header links alone. And this is gonna teach you how to properly target your rules to a certain container so that you're not affecting elements that you don't intend to. And we'll write our first rule. So here's the element that we're gonna be targeting. And if you just inspect the code, so if we right click on a link here, and in Chrome browser, you can go to inspect and Firefox has this option too. And we'll zoom in. And you can see if we hover over it, that this link is an A element. So that's the selector that we're gonna be targeting. So you could write a rule, for example, A, and then put our brackets. And you could just write border bottom one pixel solid. And that would underline it with the same color as your link color. And if you wanted to specify a different color, you could just say black, for example, and now we put a border underneath your link that's a different color than the link itself. Now you may have noticed already that this is not very accurate targeting of my links. In fact, this is just affecting every single link on my site in the sidebar, and you can't really see it in the header, but if we delete the black from this rule, you can see that it's affecting my site title, the menu, every link now has a border on the bottom. So what if I wanna actually just target to this content area? Well, let's go back to the inspector. So we're gonna right click anywhere in this container and go to inspect. And you can see if you hover over these elements, it'll show you which one is highlighted on the screen. So you sort of know where you are. And we're gonna go here. So this is the nearest container and this is the entry content container. It may be different on your site, but on my site, it's entry container. And so I wanna target my rules to only affect the links inside this container. And of course you could go out to a bigger container. So the inside article container contains everything inside the entry content container, but it also has the entry header, which is up here. So if you wanted to keep the link styles applied, to, for example, to this link here, you could use the inside article container and you can go all the way out. So if you go out to the, uh, say site content container, you can see that this contains both the content area and the sidebar area, because both are being highlighted. But if you go down to the content area, that owns only this large container here. So you can sort of see the border of the content area, which will help you target your rules effectively. But we're just gonna go for the entry content container. And so all I have to do is just add a rule, entry content. And because it's a class, it's div class entry content, we're gonna put a period in front of the name. And now you can see our link styles are only being applied to the links in this content box. They're not being applied here. They're not being applied to the sidebar or up here. Now we could change the box that we're targeting. For example, if I wanted to target the class site main. You can see that the link styles are now being applied to this link in the entry header. And you don't have to target by class, you could also use an ID. So for example, you can see that this container has the ID main or the class site main. So we could write the rule for main as well. Now, if we just make it period main, it doesn't apply the rule because this is not a class, it's an ID. So if we put the pound sign in front, that's how you target an ID by its name. And now the rules are being applied to everything in this container again. So that's just a, the basics of selecting your container. So let's go back and we're just gonna use the entry content selector like we had before. And let's look at some common styles we can apply to our links now that we've targeted them. So the most common is probably the link color. So we could just make that say blue, for example, and that will change the color of all our links. And you can use the text decoration property 
and you can make it underline. And that's sort of the classic link style. Uh, and along with this blue color, it's very reminiscent of like 1990s uh, internet if you were alive back then. And one of the nice things about using the text decoration property instead of the border property is if you accidentally target something like an image that's wrapped in a link, uh, it won't accidentally put a border on the image because the text decoration of property doesn't do anything to an image. So that's one of the ways to sort of avoid accidentally applying styles to an element that perhaps you didn't mean to. And we'll talk a bit more about that later. Now, another thing you might wanna change is the font weight. So we could try font weight bold, for example, and that will make the link stand out a little bit. And you can also use some intermediate numbers. It depends on the fonts you've loaded on your site, but if we tried, for example, font weight 500, it's just a little bit bold, it's not all the way bold. And then, like I said before, I think the third most common is probably adding a border bottom to the link. And the reason you would do that instead of the underline is usually if you either want a thicker border uh, because the text, the underline, uh, you can't change the thickness of the underline. And the second reason is you want a border that's a different color than the text itself. So if you want to do that, we just say border, bottom, and you could say, for example, three pixels solid, and that matches the color, or we could change it to yellow, say, or whatever color you wanted. All right, we'll make these links look a little bit better here. And now we can move on to the hover effects. So the hover is actually a state um, that gets applied to the link when you move your mouse cursor over the link. And the way you can target those rules is we would wanna use the same selectors that we're using to target our initial rule. And you just put a colon and the hover pseudo class after it. And then we could write any rules we want. So for example, we could say color navy. And now when you hover over these links, the link color changes to navy. You could also say, actually we're using border bottom. So we could say border none. And that border will disappear when you hover over the link. Now I'm gonna show you how to use transition periods to do easy animations between your non-hover and your hover state. So first let's change the color to something that's a little more, notice a little more noticeable. So we'll try aqua just so it's a little more um, of a distinct difference between the styles. And we're just gonna add a rule to our initial A element and that's the transition property. And this lets us specify how long the animation between the states is gonna take. Uh, and so we're gonna have this applied to all properties of the A element. So it will be applied to the color transition, border bottom transition, font weight transition, et cetera. And we will say it's gonna last, uh, let's say 0.3 seconds, and we'll ease the transition so it's not too abrupt. And now if we hover over the link, you can see that it sort of takes a little bit of time to change colors. Now you can see there's a sort of an awkward transformation with the border here. It sort of gets moved up a little bit because it's disappearing. So a way we can fix that is, for example, we could say border color, transparent. And now it won't change the size of the border. It will just sort of disappear. Now for accessibility, for people perhaps that don't control the website using a mouse, and maybe they use a keyboard or their voice to control the website, you probably wanna add a focus effect too. So this is when the link is in focus. And we could just make that rule be exactly the same as the hover effect. So to do that, we would just add a comma after a rule and we would write entry content a focus. Oop. This is supposed to be hover. Entry content a focus. And so this will apply the styles. So this will apply the exact same styles to both states, whether it's hover or focus. All right, so let's do one more example of targeting a different link just to make sure that you have the targeting down. And then we'll talk about how to fix the edge cases that maybe you accidentally targeted some links that you didn't mean to. So let's target these sidebar links over here. We're just gonna right click, inspect. And you can see that this is in the container, uh, the inside right sidebar container. So we can write our rule inside right sidebar. And that's a class, we put a period in front and then we're gonna be targeting an A and we're just gonna change the hover effect. So we'll make it the A hover and we're gonna make it color black on hover. And now you can see that when we hover over the link, it is now black. And if we delete this rule, it's just that blue color. Now let's talk about some of the edge cases that come up when you're styling links and how to fix them. The most common one is any linked images. So for example, if we use the Gutenberg editor here and we add an image and we'll just go with this image and we'll add a link. And you can see right away on the front end that this blue border that we've applied to our links is now being applied to our image as well. And we don't want that behavior probably. 
Um, fortunately, if you're using the Gutenberg block editor, it's pretty easy to fix. So that's because all the Gutenberg images are put inside this figure element. And so all we have to do is write a rule that will prevent uh, any A elements inside this figure from having the border. Let's just write a rule and the rule is figure A. So we're targeting any A element inside a figure. And you could target it specifically if you don't want it to be any figure, but you could just use this block class, which is applied to all the uh, block images. We could just add that class instead, period for a class, WP block image A, and we'll say border bottom none. And that will get rid of the border. The other option obviously is not to use a border, but use to to use the text decoration property because that doesn't affect images. All right, we've talked about selectors, we've talked about targeting, we've talked about some of the basic styles you can add, and we've talked about fixing edge cases. But if you wanna to learn to do cool animated effects like this, you're gonna to have to watch the next video, right here. Oh yeah, and hit that like button, would you? Thanks.